Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will continue with the representation theory of uh, SL2C. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we want to prove complete reducibility for finite dimensional representations of SL2C. So, let us uh, begin with uh, stating one important result. Uh, I am not actually going to prove. So, whatever ideas that we have seen so far, uh, that will actually supply proof for this. So, you should take it as exercise. So, here is the exercise which is actually a let us say proportion. So, what it says, so let us start with the finite dimensional representation of SL2C. So, not necessarily irreducible, ok. So, let uh, V be an SL2 module, ok. And suppose we have this uh, W naught which is in capital V is the highest weight vector. Okay. So, of let us say weight m. So, we have uh, V being finite dimensional SL2 module okay. and uh, suppose that W naught in V is the highest weight vector of weight m. So, to begin with this is going to be just a complex numbers. Okay. So, then what one can prove that m must be a non-negative integer okay. and this W naught generates capital V okay. and W naught generates sorry the sub module generated by W naught and the sub module generated by W naught, let us call it uh, say W has the following basis. So, the basis uh, is given by this y power i w naught 1 divided by i factorial, where i ranges from 0 to m. And if you call this as w i, okay, so then we have uh, the following formulas, have the following ba basis satisfying the following formulas. Okay, if you take x w i then it gives m minus i plus 1 w i minus 1. So, where we assume w minus 1 is 0 and then i varies from 0 to m of course and then h w i is giving us m minus 2 i w i and if you apply y w i that is going to give us i plus 1 w i plus 1. Okay. And here again w m plus 1 assumed to be 0, where i ranges from 0 to a. Okay, we have already seen these formulas uh, when we calculated uh, things for SM. Okay, similar calculation actually tells you even for finite dimensional representation, uh, finite dimensional irreducible representation V also we did the same calculation that corresponds to the highest weight vector M. So, very similar calculation actually tells you that uh, these formulas are true and uh, on top of it one can actually prove that. Uh, this sub module generated by this W naught is going to be irreducible. Okay. So, so, this has uh, this basis and not only that uh, one can actually observe that. Okay. 
so maybe like I will leave it as exercise 2. So, if you combine these things you get more more information. So, given any 5 dimensional representation that has a highest weight vector uh, w naught of weight m. So, we have this these conclusions ok. So, now uh, what we are going to do ok we will take abstractly uh, given m some uh, 5 dimensional representation that looks like the span of w i ok. Let us start with uh, m inside g plus then consider v m which is the span of w i where i ranges from 0 to m ok. Now, we are considering abstract space span by some symbols w i ok. So, these are this is some abstract space abstract space span by w i and now define ok. Let us call this is star ok. Define the action of define the action of S L to C using the formulas that we have in star. So, then the claim is then we can show that V of M is indeed S L to C module and it is irreducible ok. Note that the dimension of V of M will be M plus 1 ok. So, note that the dimension of V of M is M plus 1. So, this is one way to actually construct uh, uh, finite dimensional irreducible module associated with the m abstractly ok. So, we take abstract basis w i and then define the action using this formula then one can verify that th these formulas actually gives you S L 2 action on this v of m and not only that the same proof that we have seen in S m actually tells you that uh, this must be irreducible because the action of x actually brings down the indices. So, it goes from i to i minus 1 and the action of y actually increases the indices from i to i plus 1 and h actually makes it stable. So, using these actions one can immediately show that uh, the abstract module that is defined using these formulas going to be irreducible ok. And we also seen explicitly uh, how one can construct uh, using uh, this homogeneous polynomials of degree m in uh, two variables ok. So, very similar to that. So, now uh, using this uh, you can actually see that uh, uh, this module that we have here uh, generated by uh, this uh, uh, this w naught uh, almost looks like irreducible module uh, corresponding to this uh, uh, highest weight vector, highest weight m. So, indeed one can prove that this w will be isomorphic to v of m because all these vectors are non-zero. So, that means uh, they are basis for this w and w will be isomorphic to v of m. So, that also I will leave it as exercise that that immediately follows from this proportion. So, now uh, let us make one important observation if we start with the finite dimensional representation let us say finite dimensional representation of S L 2 C then we can always have highest weight vector ok. We can always have a highest weight vector inside capital V. So, how can one can uh, uh, guarantee this? So, let us look at the operator h that is acting on capital V 
then because h is acting on a finite dimensional uh, space it must have an eigen value let us take uh, vector w to be eigen value of uh, uh, eigen vector of h with eigen value a. So, that means h w should be equal to a w. Now, use this action of x and then see that x w is going to lie inside v a plus 2. So, now since uh, all this a plus 2 k's are all distinct, so that tells you that there exists some smallest k for which x power k plus 1 w is actually not uh, 0 and then x power k w will be 0. Okay. Now, what one can do? One can replace v by x power k w as before that we have seen in the analysis of finite dimensional irreducible representation. So, then we have h v equal to some lambda v where lambda is exactly a minus a plus 2 k and then x v becomes 0. Okay. So, this tells us that uh, there is always highest weight vector inside capital V. So, of some weight uh, lambda, okay, highest weight lambda. So, that means uh, using our earlier analysis, we can observe that this lambda must be in z plus and this sub module generated by this V inside capital V, this is going to be isomorphic to V of lambda. Okay. So, in particularly we have this embedding of V of lambda inside capital V for any finite dimensional representation of capital V. So, this is something very simple. Okay. Actually, one can prove this in many multiple ways. For example, we can look at all possible SL2 submodules inside capital V. Okay. So, basically consider the set V dash where V dash is SL2 submodule. Now, we can actually put uh, uh, inclusion as partial order in this. Okay. Now, look at the dimension of all these uh, spaces. Okay. If I take uh, V dash which has uh, smallest dimension, let us assume V dash are all non-zero, okay. zero space we do not need to worry about it. So, you consider all possible non-zero SL2 submodules, then we can actually take dimension of all of them, then there will be a minimal dimension achieved. Okay. So, there exists V dash here in this set, in this collection such that the dimension V dash is minimum. So, now V dash must be irreducible because if it is not irreducible, then it will have proper non-zero sub module okay, that will actually give you smaller dimension module. So, that we cannot have because this is the minimum dimension that we have. Okay. So, more or less this general argument forces that any given finite dimensional representation there is always irreducible sub representation. Okay. Now, given that uh, any uh, finite dimensional irreducible representation is isomorphic to V of m for some m inside z plus. So, we can actually have this same statement. Uh, using this general discussion as well. Okay. So, these observations actually will help us to actually understand uh, more about representations of uh, SL2. So, now uh, we will actually move on to uh, understanding uh, uh, general uh, representations. Okay. So, here is the important thing. Okay. So, if you have some operator, okay. So, what is we are re uh, really trying to do? We are actually trying to actually prove complete reducibility, okay? completely uh, reducible property. So, if you are actually aiming to prove something is uh, completely reducible, that means it is direct sum of irreducible representations, okay? then we should actually propose some way of uh, decomposing given module, some algorithm to decompose, okay? how one can achieve something like that. Okay. It is a some general nonsense. So, let us start with some operator. Let us call it uh, uh, operator uh, let us say T. So, this is uh, let us say there inside endomorphism of V. So, let us say V is given finite dimensional 
representation of S L to C. Okay. And uh, this uh, idea works for any representation. Okay. I am just demonstrating it for uh, finite dimensional uh, representation of S L to C. So, now uh, choose this operator T inside endomorphism of V such that T commutes with the action of S L to C. Okay. So, basically you are looking at uh, all possible. So, S L to C to this G L of V which is endomorphism of V. Okay. So, you have a map phi. So, phi is the representation, this is the representation. So, we have this phi of x, phi of h and phi of y, all of them are elements inside this endomorphism of phi. So, now what I want? I want t such that it actually commutes with all of them and so on. Okay. So, once you have such representation, sorry such operator then what I can do with that that is the question. So, one can actually immediately think, uh, talk about primary decomposition of uh, this V with respect to T. So, one can talk about generalized eigenspaces and one can write V as uh, direct sum of uh, generalized eigenspaces. Okay. So, let us recall for given theta in C uh, we can define what is called this uh, V theta. So, let me put it uh, theta here on the top. So, this is I want it to be generalized eigenspace, generalized eigenspace corresponding to theta. So, what it is? This is those vector in capital V such that when I take T minus theta identity on V, some power of that should kill this vector V. Okay, for some k in a, k in a z plus. Okay. So, note that uh, uh, from general uh, theory of uh, linear algebra or linear operators, you know that okay, uh, there is actually some unique uh, number for which this all will be killed. Okay on this V theta at least because so this T minus theta identity that is going to be nilpotent operator when you restrict it on V theta. So, obviously T minus theta identity power dimension of V theta will be 0 okay, that is what the general theory says, but anyway this is good enough for our, our definition. So, now uh, what one can have V can be written as direct sum of V theta for various theta. Obviously, V theta could be 0, whenever V theta is non-zero that is will be called uh, generalized eigenspace, anyway 0 space and all we do not care. So, let us say that uh, only for finitely many thetas this V theta will be 0, V theta will be non-zero for only finitely many values of values of theta. Uh, because the V is finite dimensional. Now, what is special about this V theta? Okay, it is a simple exercise. If uh, phi x commutes with t, then this generalized eigenspace will be invariant under phi x. Okay. So, it is a simple exercise because if I take t minus theta identity V power k, V is 0. So, this is capital V. So, then if I take x v and then look at t minus again theta identity applied on k. So, since x t is equal to t x, you can see that x can be taken out and then this will become t minus identity power k v which is 0. So, this tells you that x v is again inside v theta. So, if you have operators, okay that commutes with T, then the eigens generalized eigenspaces of that operator will become invariant under that operators. So, in particularly it will be invariant under all these operators phi of x, phi of y, phi of h. So, in particular it will be invariant under entire result to action. So, that means V theta becomes 
SL2 sub module. So, V theta is a SL2 sub module of capital V. Okay. So, we have this V being direct sum of V theta, theta varies over C, this is indeed SL2 representation decomposition. So, decomposition of SL2 representations. Okay. So, already we have proposed one method to actually decompose V into direct sum of some smaller representation. Of course, if you if you take another uh, element from endomorphism of V, which actually again uh, uh, commits with the, all the operators of SL2, uh, then you can have another decomposition. But if you want to actually somewhat interconnect between theta and this new let us say theta dash, so then uh, you demand that theta and theta dash again commutes. Okay. If you have another operator theta dash such that theta theta dash commutes and theta commute with uh, uh, any g, g comes from SL to C. So, then you can see that this theta dash actually leaves this V theta invariant. So, then you can decompose V theta into further as generalized eigenspaces for theta dash then you can actually have further decomposition of uh, uh, V theta into SL2 representation. So, this way we can keep actually kind of getting uh, decomposition of uh, SL2 modules. And of course, it has to stop at some point because uh, you cannot keep on decomposing further and further, you can reach max irreducible. So, for, for that purpose we need to have lots and lots of elements that commutes with uh, the action of SL2. Okay. So, we will see that uh, uh, in, in, in the theory of semi simple Lie algebra. So, we talk about what is called the center of uh, the universal Lie algebra. So, that is indeed really huge, it is going to be isomorphic to uh, some polynomial algebra. So, it is indeed very, very big algebra inside setting universal Lie algebra. So, if you take images of those elements inside your endomorphism of V, then they all will commute with the action of G. So, that way you will be getting rich num number of elements that will be actually uh, helping us to decompose our representation into smaller representation. But indeed we do not need really the full power of uh, all those uh, elements that comes from the uh, center of the universal Lie algebra. All we need is just one element which is called the Casimir element. Okay. Uh, I will actually uh, give the definition of uh, the Casimir element for SL2C now. So, later we will see how to define that for uh, general uh, SL and C and so on. So, uh, since I have not actually uh, defined uh, what is uh, uh, the universal mapping algebra. So, we will just define it in the endomorphism of V itself. So, it is now looks like depending upon uh, the representation that you choose, but one can actually make sense of uh, some universal element uh, uh, that actually uh, comes from actually the universal Lie algebra. Okay. So, what is Casimir element? Casimir element of SL2C. So, note that uh, uh, V is let us say finite dimensional representation of SL to C. So, let us call this phi which is the map from SL to C to GL of V. Again I am identifying the action everything in terms of this. Okay. So, now I am going to define this C from V to V where C is given to be phi of x, phi of y plus phi of y phi of x plus of times phi of h square. Okay. So, this is the uh, map that we are interested in. So, there is actually very good meaning uh, in terms of uh, there is something called killing form. So, basically 
we are looking at the basis and its dual basis, the basis being x h y and its dual basis again one can compute that is also going to be this y uh, sorry if x y h then it will be y x h again. So, uh, it this thing can be written in terms of that. So, it has some deep meaning it is not that some random element is written here. Okay. So, but now for uh, time being we can take this as definition. So, now this is an element inside endomorphism of E. Okay. So, I will leave it to you to check uh, this C commutes with SL2 action. Okay, I will stop here, uh, we will actually continue with the uh, complete disability of finite dimensional representations of SL2C in the next class. Thank you.